life moved on, but the memories of that adventure with Emily remained in my mind like a secret I carried with me everywhere. My new job kept me busy, and my girlfriend, Sophie, was kind and supportive. We met through mutual friends, and everything seemed nice and easy, something I hadn't experienced before. Sophie was a few years younger than me, full of energy, dreaming of traveling the world, starting a family, and living an interesting life. But sometimes when Sophie and I lay in bed, the lights dimmed, I closed my eyes, and my thoughts returned to that fleeting moment with Emily. I didn't want to compare Sophie to her. Sophie was beautiful in her own way. But there was something about the intensity and spontaneity of what had happened with Emily that awakened something deeper, more primal in me. That forbidden, unexpected moment of passion haunted me not because it was wrong, but because I needed it at that moment in my life. After leaving the company, I didn't socialize with Emily. We exchanged a few pleasantries on my last day, and that was the end of it. No follow-up, no messages, just silence. It seemed like that night was a dream, something imagined rather than lived. But one evening, as I was sitting at my desk going through some spreadsheets, my phone rang. It was a text from an unfamiliar number, still thinking about my gift. My heart raced. I knew exactly who the message was from. I hadn't deleted her number, even though I told myself I would. I stared at the message for what seemed like an eternity. Should I respond? What should I even say? My fingers hovered over the screen. I was in a stable relationship now, moving forward with my life, but some part of me, the reckless yearning part, wanted to see her again. I typed back. How could I forget? The answer was quick. Coffee this Friday. I'll be at the Bluebird Cafe at 6. Don't be late. I didn't answer right away. I knew it was a bad idea, but the curiosity was too great to resist. Maybe I wanted it to be over, or maybe I just wanted to see if the magic of that night still remained between us. I made a decision. That Friday, I told Sophie I had a late meeting. She smiled and kissed me goodbye without realizing it. I felt a prick of guilt but pushed it aside. When I walked into the calf, there she was Emily sitting in the corner, looking as elegant and collected as ever. She was still the same, only more radiant than I remembered. Her eyes lit up when she saw me, and for a moment we just stared at each other, the air between us filled with the weight of the past. We exchanged pleasantries, awkwardly at first, but soon the conversation flowed easily, as if no time had passed at all. So, how's life treating you? I asked, trying to keep my tone light even though my heart was pounding in my chest. Oh, you know, she replied with a sly smile. Busy as always. But I've had some free time to think about you. I swallowed hard, not knowing what to answer. I hadn't expected her to be so blunt. And you? She asked, leaning in slightly. Still happy with your girlfriend? I hesitated not realizing what she wanted to hear. Yeah, Sophie's great, I replied, but even to myself those words sounded hollow. Emily tilted her head, watching me carefully. I'm not here to meddle in your life, she said softly. I just wanted to see you again. That's all. Her words hung in the air, and for a moment I considered walking away. But something held me in place the memories, the desire, the bond that had formed between us that night. It wasn't just the physical act. She saw me in a way no one else had. I wanted to experience that feeling again. I missed you, I finally admitted, and the truth came out before I could stop it. Her smile widened, but there was no triumph in it. It was understanding, like she already knew. I missed you too. We spent the rest of the evening talking, laughing, and reminiscing about old times. But underneath it all, there was an unspoken tension, a pull that neither of us could ignore. As we left the calf and stood outside in the cool evening air, she touched my arm lightly. Take care, she said softly. Maybe we'll meet again. And in the same instant, she was gone. I watched her go, and at the same time, I really wanted to call her back, but at the same time, I was glad it was over. 
I went home that night, kissed Sophie, and lay awake for hours. I didn't know what the future held for Emily and me, or if we would ever see each other again. But one thing I was certain of was that she would always be in the back of my mind, this unforgettable chapter of my life, tucked away but never truly closed.